Bye. Okay, we're trying to find the inverse of uh, 32, this uh, fifth root function. So what we're going to do is we're first we're going to switch x and y, that being the understood y. 2 times the fifth root of y plus 4, and then minus 1 in the exterior. So the whole um, thing about finding the inverse is making sure that you're undoing the operations in the correct order. The outermost operation acting on y is the minus 1. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 1. The next outermost operation is the multiplication by 2. So we're going to divide both terms by 2, or both sides by 2. Now, you could leave it as x plus 1 over 2. Um, you could write x plus 1 over 2. That's not a 2. Or that is a 2. It should be a 1. That gamut. You could write x plus 1 over 2. You could write 1 half x plus 1 half. Or you could write 1 half times x plus 1. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to count you wrong for any one of those, okay? So um, just to stay consistent with what I do, I'm going to go ahead and write the 1 half out front. And leave it like that. So the fifth root of y plus 4. The next thing I'm going to do is the, the outermost operation is the fifth root. So I'm going to raise both sides to the fifth power. So I've got 1 half x plus 1 all to the fifth power equals y plus 4. And then I'm going to subtract the 4 over. So I know g inverse equals 1 half x plus 1 to the and then out all to the fifth power, and then minus 4, okay? Or x plus 1 over 2 to the fifth power minus 4. Or 1 half x minus 1 half on the interior, plus 1 half, I mean. Okay, now we're going to prove they are inverses use, using composition. So I'm going to plug, um, I think I'm going to plug g inverse into g. So g is that original fifth root, so I'm going to start with that. 2 times the fifth root of something plus 4 minus 1. Okay, and inside that, for x in g, I'm going to replace it with all of this. So 1 half x plus 1 to the fifth minus 4. So the reason why I didn't put parentheses around is because I wasn't multiplying it this by anything, I was just adding something to it. So I can easily see that the first thing that simplifies is these fours, right? Then I've got 2 times the fifth root of the quantity 1 half x plus 1 to the fifth power minus 1. So then I notice that the fifth root and the fifth power can go away. So I'm left with 2 times 1 half times x plus 1 minus 1. Well this outer parentheses now can be just replaced with a little times, just as a little reminder that's what we're doing, right? So the 2 times a half just becomes 1. And so I'm really left with 1 times x plus 1, which is x plus 1 minus 1, which is just x. And there we go. So they are inverses. And then um, we're going to do the same thing with this one, number 33. So we'll start with switching x and y. So x equals negative 7 over 3, 4 minus y, quantity cubed, plus 2. Uh, the outermost operation is the plus 2, so I'm going to subtract that over. x minus 2 equals negative 7 thirds, 4 minus y, quantity cubed. Next thing I'm going to do is multiply by negative 3 sevenths. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. So negative, and you could go ahead and distribute that. And I'm pretty sure I told you, like, when you were finding the inverses, or when you're finding functions earlier with transformations, like 1.6, I did have you distribute the 1 half and say 1 half x plus 1 half to the fifth power. Um, but I'm okay if we don't do that. I mean, so like this, we could say negative 3x plus 6 all over 7, but, or negative 3 sevenths x plus 6 7 sec, or plus 6 7 but I'm okay if we just leave it like this. Equals, we got rid of that with that. 4 minus y quantity cubed. Now we're going to take the cubed root of both sides, because that's the opposite of the cubed power, power of 3. 
So I've got the cube root of negative 3 7 times x minus 2 equals 4 minus y. We're going to, now there's two different ways to do this. You could add the y and subtract this over, which most people wouldn't decide to do, or you can subtract 4 and divide by a negative, which is what most people would do. So the cube root of negative 3 7 times x minus 2 minus 4 equals a negative y. So just remember that when you divide by a negative, you're dividing the entire the entire side by negative, but that means each individual term is divided by a negative. So like this term, this is all one term, is divided by a negative, and so is the 4. So the coefficient out front, 1, becomes negative. So negative cubed root of negative 3 sevenths x minus 2. And then negative 4 divided by negative 1 is positive 4. And that would be f inverse. Okay, so if we're going to do the composition, then we're going to plug um, this function into that one or that one into this one. doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and do f of f inverse. I don't have as much space, so I'm going to write it kind of small. Sorry, I'm tilting my paper. I'll tilt my camera as well. So I'm going to start with my original function. Negative 7 thirds times 4 minus something quantity cubed plus 2. So all I did was put a set of parentheses inside where there's an x on the original function right there and inside that original function I'm going to put the inverse. Negative cubed root of negative 3 sevenths x minus 2 plus 4. Okay. So this one is kind of interesting as far as like what the next operation, the outermost operation acting on it. The outermost operation acting on it is minus. So we're going to go ahead and distribute our minus sign. We're going to subtract this negative cube root and we're going to subtract this plus 4. And so you can see where that would go with the 4's. So I've got negative 7 thirds 4 minus or it becomes plus, the cubed root of negative 3 sevenths times x minus 2 and then minus 4 quantity cubed plus 2. So I'm going to have to do some steps together here. The 4's simplify each other out. Now once they're gone, so this is step 1, I'll number them so that we can Step two is getting rid of the fours. Step three is going to be canceling out. Now, now that you should just think about this interior. If the fours are gone, then I've got a cubed root being raised to the third power, right? So I can simplify out the cubed root and the third power. So that's step three. So now I'm left with negative seven thirds times. This is no longer um, being raised to the third power in the cubed root, so it's negative three sevenths times x minus two which is really just this times this and then don't forget the plus two at the end, right? These two uh, numbers are reciprocals of each other and so negative times negative is positive, they go away. X minus two plus two is X. They are inverses. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call that good for that video.